So welcome to April's basic Saturday sampler here at Close to Home in Southington. So you can begin to pick up your basic April kit beginning this Saturday, April 20th. So be sure to bring in your completed March block between April 20th and May 31st to receive this April kit free. Don't forget this Saturday, April 20th, we will be having select finish the bolts for 50% off. And of course we have many classes to choose from, such as the Mondo bag, the dream bag, little star wall hanging. We have a free motion quilting class coming up, our Bargello, um, many more. Uh, please look at our website or come into the store and sign up. So today's basic block is the Dresden plate. This one is a very simple Dresden plate with only three blades in a corner. So these are 30 degree blades that we're going to be sewing together in groups of three and then we're going to be sewing the halves together and then we're just going to sew the centers together. I'll show you how to make a turned center, how to applique it to our background and then trim it to size. What you're going to need is from the feather, the sable, and the black seed, which is um, what we have on our Dresdens, you will cut your strips four and a half inches wide by whatever the length is that I was given in the kit. Don't worry about the length, just four and a half for each one. The white seed for the center, do not cut that until um, I show you how. And of course the white background, do not cut that until everything's appliqued and final pressed. Um, and then we will trim it down to 12 and a half. Additional supplies you're gonna need is a 12 and a half inch ruler to finish off um, and square the block threads to match for applique. You will also need a one-third yard tear easy stabilizer. These are pre-cut in the store for you. Um, so you can get them at our third yard or you can buy them by the yard, it doesn't matter. Also a 505 temporary adhesive and either the purple thing or the point turner creaser. All right, let's get going with our star ruler. Our star ruler, like I said, is a 30 degree. It's the Creative Grid Starburst ruler. I have used this in the past. Um, there are multiple ways to use this ruler, um, but for now we will use it as a um, blades for our Dresden plate. Something very simple. There are A lines and B lines ignore those for now. We're just going to be using this as a um, template for our 30 degree blades on our Dresden. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is cut our three uh, colored fabrics into a four and a half inch strip and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the starburst ruler and if we can just get a real close up um, we're going to put the bottom of our strip on the one line and the top of the strip on our five and a half line which is the white line you can't really see it but it's five and a half okay so let's go ahead and cut our Put our strips. I have all three stacked together. All I want to do is clean up one edge. I'm going to just turn this around and cut a four and a half inch strip. So here's my half, one, two, three, four. Lines up with my cut line. Hold that ruler, keep your fingers out of the way, and one nice cut going up. Okay, so now that I have my, doesn't really matter, now that I have this, I'm going to place the one at the bottom of my strip and the five and a half at the top of my strip. Get that white line right along the strip and I'm just going to cut my first wedge down this way and that way. You can go to the other side of the table if you you know don't want to cut backwards which is completely okay. So here's my first 
quarter. I have one of each. I'm just going to rotate my starburst ruler. Again, the one goes at the bottom, the five and a half at the top, and the line I just cut is right along the starburst. And we're going to cut four of these. We're just going to keep turning, looking for the one, for the five and a half, turn it. And we only need four of these because there's only four quarters. Again, look for the one, look for the five and a half, and go ahead and cut those. All right, so now we have all these blades. We're going to take these over to our sewing machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew these blades. We're going to take the longer or wider half of the blade, right sides together, matching up the points and we're going to sew this at a quarter of an inch. And I like to um, have a little bit smaller stitch length when I do that, so that um, when, I, when I turn this inside out, um, I get a nice point there. So I'm just going to do one or two and show you how to make the blades. All right, so again, I press this in half. I st I'm starting my quarter of an inch uh, on the raw side toward the fold. While it's here at my sewing machine, I like to take my point uh, turner and seam creaser and just give that a little bit of a press right there and I'll, I'll show you why I do that in a second. All right, straight stitch, quarter inch foot. I'm just turning down my stitch just a little bit, maybe a 1.8 and I'm going to sew a nice quarter of an inch and I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to fold, I'm going to put the edge in first, that's the raw edges, just give it a little bit of a, a press with my creaser, and we're just going to continue to um, sew all 12 of these, okay, all right. So what we're going to do with these is the next step is before I turn them inside out, I need to um, trim away some of the bulk that's in the point. If I just turned them like this, I would have a lot of fabric up in that point. So what I like to do is just go toward the fold and I'm just going to take a little snip a little bit of a curve and leave about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch um, near the fold. I'll do it one more time. So it's a little harder to see, but I come in and I just give it a little bit of a curve straight out. Do not cut the, th the threads. All right. When we have all 12 of those trimmed, we're going to turn them right side out, give them a little, little point with the finger, <laughs> And then take your pointer and very gently we're going to just pop a point into the top of our blade. All right, so let's turn this out and very carefully just give a little point. If you go too hard, the point of your purple thing or your seam creaser point turner is going to go right through the end. All right, so now we're going to press all these, and the reason I gave this uh, edge a little seam crease is because I now want to line up this seam with that crease. So I don't know if you see where I put that crease. It was right here. That's my halfway mark. So I'm going to line up this seam with that crease, and it doesn't matter which way the seam allowance goes um, as long as this is in the middle. All right, so let's give these a press. I like to press them from the point down toward the center of the Dresden. All right, we'll do one more. We're going to find the center fold that I made right here, line it up with that seam, hold on to it, and I go from the point straight down and just hold it. All right, so we're going to make 12 of these, all folded and pressed and poked nicey-nice. 
The next thing we want to do is sew them in two sets of three. And I just did it with the feather, the uh, black seed, and the sable. Feather, black seed, sable. So to join these together, we're going to join three to three to make a half and then the halves together. So I'll show you how to sew these blades together while making my ring. All right, so let's start with these two right here. So we're gonna put them right sides together, matching the points, matching the edges down to here. So they sit right up on top of each other. The key to this is when you start sewing, you're gonna sew backwards. You're gonna start here, and you're gonna go backwards so that the needle comes off the unit. And then you're going to come forward and complete this seam. All right, so let's do that on the, on the sewing machine. And I'll do all three of these so I get a nice circle for you. So line them up on top of each other. I'm going to start sewing a little bit in with my reverse pushed. So I'm holding the reverse. I'm going to take a couple C, a couple stitches until my needle pops off the unit. And then I'm just going to come straight forward. The reason we're doing this is um, I, I need to um, bury this thread and I also need a nice securing stitch um, right at the intersection right in this groove right here. So this isn't going to open up on, on me. And I don't want all my threads uh, coming out through here. So if I start the threads here, they don't show. And by backing up, I really do reinforce that intersection. So now I have two pieces, two halves. We're gonna put together. So I'm gonna join this one to here. I'll do it one more time. Actually, I'll do it two more times, a little bit quicker this time, in reverse. Hold the reverse, take a couple stitches, and then forward. Matching up our ends. Okay. And then the last one I have is this one right here. So I'm just gonna join it into a circle. So I'll put these two together just like I did all the others. I started with three, then I went to halves, and now I'm making the full circle. Again, holding that reverse button down, taking about three or four stitches back just till my needle falls over the edge of the fold, and then I'm just gonna come forward. At a normal stitch of about a 2.0. Alright. Alright, so let's press this and then we'll show you what's next. So we want to be super gentle with this. Of course, everything's been um, starch with the Mary Ellen's Best Press. Um, I'm just going to go all in one direction, but I'm not going to just take my iron and whiz it around. I'm just going to try to open each blade as I get to it. And when I say open, I'm just giving it just a little bit of a tug, a little bit of a tug, a little bit of a tug, until I can't turn the corner anymore. And then I'll turn my Dresden. Put my iron down, go in the direction of the seam, direction of the seam, just like this. Just opening up that seam a little bit. You don't want to play too much with it. Around, next one, next one. Okay, come around. Uh, two more, one and two. That's it. So you can give a nice final press to the top. Again, I'm not ironing all that much. I'm just giving it a nice press, making sure all my seams are open. All right, so let's make the center ring for this. Oops. So what you're gonna do is you have a third of a yard of tear away. 
Um, all you need to do is remove, you know, keep about 13 inches and the rest you can cut off. On your extra piece of tearaway on the directions, you're going to see a, um, a circle pattern. So what you need to do is trace this circle pattern onto the tearaway. So we'll go ahead and do that. And again, I'm just using a friction pen. And we'll go around in a circle. Doesn't have to be super accurate. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this tear easy with the circle. We're going to place it on top of the right side of our of our center center circle fabric. And we're going to go ahead and stitch all the way around on the line. And now I did back stitch a little bit when I started and when I ended. So go slow. Pick up, you know, stop with the needle in, pick up the foot, just do a nice circle. And then when it's all sewn, you're going to trim it away like this. So here's the wrong side, here's the right side with my tear easy. So to turn this right side out, I just trimmed it down to about an eighth of an inch and you're just going to cut right into that tear easy and you're going to cut across and make like a little X. And then we're going to take our tear easy, we're just going to poke our fabric to the right side. It's just turning it and finishing off that edge. So I just take my, my hand, kind of give it a circle. I can also take my, um, there it is, my point turner seam creaser, and I can give it a nice circle edge just like this. When I'm happy with the circle, I'm going to go over to the iron and give this a press. So let's just do that. And then the last thing you can do is you can trim this away if you'd like. There's no reason to keep any of this tear easy in here. So again, I just trim it down to about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so we'll go around. All right, next thing we're going to do is get our background ready. There we are. All right, so we have our Dresden, we have our center. Um, I've taken this, uh, it's about approximately 14 inches. All I did was I folded it right sides together, gave it a good press, and then pressed it again. So I have registration marks as far as um, the center of my background fabric. Double check to make sure that you are on the right side of your fabric. And we're going to place our Dresden plate with this intersection at the north, south, east, and west. So when you're happy that this is centered, you can um, put a couple pins in it. And I put, um, wait, hold on. I put a few pins like every other, but you can put every single one, however you like, just to hold your Dresden on the back. And the next thing we're going to do is put our uh, circle in the center and we're going to applique. And one more here and one more here. All right. So the last thing, we're going to take our circle and if you want to line up the lines with the center, um, that's fine. You can offset the lines of the seeds. Um, I'm going to find the center of this so I know that it's the center. And I can go up a little bit just like that and I'll pin that on. All right, so we're going to spray some 505 on our tear easy because every time we do any kind of decorative stitches or applique stitches, we want to make sure that we do stabilize our fabric a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of 505 on the tear easy, not my fabric. And we'll go ahead and place this, oops, place this right in the center. 
and we have to applique. So the last step is appliquing around. I've picked a couple colors that I think would, would go very nicely um, around the edge of the applique of the, um, of the Dresden, sorry. Um, you also want to make sure that you use an open toe foot so that you can see the stitches as you're going around. So you're going to go around the edges plus around the circle. So let's set that up real quick and I'll do a couple applique stitches and then we'll tear away our tear away our stabilizer. Okay. So I choose this one. So we're going to change up our stitch, change up our thread. And then the last thing we want to do is a couple stitches. Change my foot. Put on my open toe. And on this machine, it's the Bernina 475. I'm going to go to the uh, quilting stitches and I'm going to go to 1309, which is my blanket stitch. Um, you can make the fingers of the blanket stitch any size that you want. You can make them wider and you can make them longer apart from each other. It's your, um, you, you decide. Uh, you can even do a zigzag. You can do um, just about anything you want. So the first thing we're going to do is lock our stitch. So I'm going to put my knot on. And it's going to take a couple stitches just on the background. So here goes the needle right on the background. It's going to knot and then it's going to come over to the left, back to the background. It's going to come forward, left, to the background, forward, left, to the background, forward. We're just going to continue this pattern all the way around, pivoting when we get to the corner. So I'll get to the corner, go slow. Yours might go a couple times back and forth. Um, it's whatever you like. I like to end with the needle down, lift my foot, and then I'm going to pivot this way. All right, left, background, forward, left, right, forward, left, right, forward. We're going to continue in that motion all the way around and the center. All right, and the very last step is when you have this all appliqued all the way around and around in the circle, you want to be, um, you want to go ahead and tear away this stabilizer. All right, so just hold the stitches, give this a little rip all the way around, do the outside pieces and the inside pieces and inside the circle as well, okay? And the very last step you want to do is to trim this down. So that's why we have our 12 and a half inch square. You'll notice that the square, um, this creative grid square has these white lines that go directly through the center of my 12 and a half inch ruler. Perfect. This white line is going to match up exactly with my fold lines. So I'm going to go put um, the, it's hard to see white on white, I'm sorry, but here's my white line. So it's going to be intersecting right into this V. I look at my other white line, it's intersecting, but this one has to get moved down. So as long as this white line is in here, in here, in there, and in there, I like it. I'm happy. Once it's centered, then we're just going to go around and we're going to trim our block to 12 and a half. One last cut. I'll come to this side. So your blocks must be appliqued, and there's our block for April. The blocks must be appliqued in order to get your free kit for May, so make sure that you do finish and trim down your block when it's ready. Again, if you have any questions um, as far as applique or the uh, ruler, um, please come in and ask, and hope you enjoyed the block, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.